Hey everybody, so it's been quite a minute since I last made regular uploads and that trend is about to change. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to install Raspberry Pi OS and Docker and Docker Compose so that we can set you up for future videos where we're going to be self-hosting a lot of services that are going to make our life easier while simultaneously cutting the cord, <laughs> cutting the cord from cloud providers. So in this video, we're going to be showing you basically how to install Docker and Docker Compose. Now, please, for the love of mercy, you don't need a Raspberry Pi 4. Um, you can basically use a used laptop, which I've been doing for the last two years. I've been using a laptop as a home server. And now I bought some used PC, like some office PC for like 50 bucks that basically it's like three times more powerful than my current server and hopefully in the future I can make a video about that. So right now we're going to be using a Raspberry Pi but you don't really need to. If you plan on self-hosting services and you don't have a Raspberry Pi, you can do it with a normal computer since after all Docker is a virtualization environment for containers. Um, if that sounded really fancy, all you need to know, this is what I tell people, Docker is like little virtual machines, self-contained rooms for software. Um, some experts are probably going to hang me for saying virtual machines and Docker, but that's the best way I can explain it to people that don't really know what it is. So for this video, you're going to need the Raspberry Pi. I know the Raspberry Pi 5 just came out. This is a Raspberry Pi 4. You can even have a Raspberry Pi 3 if you don't want, if you don't have, like, if you don't want it to invert, like invest in a new one, or you can use an alternative board as well. This is a Libre computer. Or like I said, a used laptop or a used desktop. Don't worry about it. So this tutorial, setting up Raspberry Pi OS on the Raspberry Pi 4, you're going to need a micro SD card. We're going to insert this in the computer. And now that we have inserted the micro SD card. Let's switch over to our computer. All we need to do is install Raspberry Pi Imager. Now this program is available in all platforms, basically Windows, Mac OS and Linux. So once you have this program installed, you can go to choose device. We are going to be installing into a Raspberry Pi 4. Uh, we're going to choose the operating system. I like the minimal 64-bit operating system. So right now, this appears to be a desktop environment and we're going to be using it as a server. So we can go to Raspberry Pi Other, scroll down, Raspberry Pi Lite, 64-bit, and then for the storage device, we're going to choose the micro SD card that we just inserted. Now, once we click next, it should allow us to input the network credentials and a bunch of configuration stuff. So we need to go right here to edit settings. Uh, we're going to give it, the, we're going to give it like a host name. I don't like Raspberry Pi. I just like, you know, Pi server, or in this case, we're just going to use Pi 4. We can set up a username code fallacy. And then let's please use a secure password. We can give it the network name right here. I'm going to be using a ethernet port. So this is not necessary. And setting up the locale East Coast US keyboard. That sounds great. Now we just need to apply the, con the configuration to the SD card. It's going to format the SD card and this is going to take some time. So input the admin password. And now this is going to take a minute. All right. So the write was successful to the SD card. Let's just click continue. Uh, we think we're good to eject the storage. So let's go over here and eject. Hmm. Interesting. It won't let me eject it, but you know what? Whatever. We're just going to eject it manually. I know it may cause 
some people to cringe, but it's not really necessary. Okay, now that the Raspberry uh, SD card has been ejected, we are going to insert it into the Raspberry Pi 4. Now, I don't have the adapters to connect to a screen, which is, you know, kind of a bummer. But the way I'm going to figure out what the Raspberry Pi 4's address is going to be is by accessing my router. And then once I look at the connection in my router, I'm going to then SSH into the, into the Raspberry Pi 4 in this computer. Okay, so I connected the Raspberry Pi to Ethernet and AC adapter charger. It's not the official one. I do have an official one, but I can't find it. I wanted to showcase like this is a Raspberry Pi server that I built a while ago and it's been working amazing. It has a, like a 4 terabyte hard drive, Raspberry Pi, active cooling, it's pretty awesome. Uh, but this one is the one we're going to be focusing on. The reason it's glowing is because it has one of those fancy LED fans. Alright, once it starts up, let's just go back to the computer. And then once we're here, we should be able to go into our router and just find the IP. So I ended up logging into my router and I discover Pi4, the name of the host that we added in that configuration. Uh, basically the IP is this one. So we can copy this and while connected to the same network, we can SSH into the Raspberry Pi 4. So if you're using Windows, you may need to install something called, um, I believe it's called PuTTY, or you can use WSL, Windows Subsystem for Linux. Um, maybe PowerShell will allow you to SSH, but I am not sure. But if you're in a Mac or Linux, this is super simple. Just SSH, then the name of the user that we specified, which I think was code fallacy. And then we're gonna do at, Okay, so for some reason I can't copy it, but it's 192.168.50. Now it's going to ask us if we want to add this to our known uh, SSH. This is for like the, the computer I'm on. Okay, now it's asking us for the Pi's password. Awesome. Now we are on the Raspberry Pi. Now the first thing that we should always be doing is to update everything. So let's just update the Raspberry Pi. sudo apt update and sudo apt upgrade. This is so awesome. I'm really, really happy that this worked right away. Um, so it's going to update. It may take some time I'm making this a little bit bigger so that y'all can see. All right, once it's updated, we'll get back. All right, so it finally updated. I went ahead and also installed NeoFetch so that we can see system information. So this is Raspberry Pi 4 Model B. It is running Raspberry Pi OS, but this is being recognized as regular Debian GNU Linux. And as you can tell, we're using 98 megabytes out of the four gig gigabytes available, which is quite nice. Oof, that is quite nice. Look how lightweight this operating system is. Awesome. So now that we updated the Raspberry Pi 4, let's just go ahead and install Docker. And that is super simple. The Docker people have a script that automatically downloads Docker and installs it on Windows systems. So the command is curl, which is a utility to fetch files over the web, over SSL. Then this is the URL of the script. And then this just tells it to execute. So this will do everything for you. It will recognize the architecture of the system and it will install Docker engine according to the system. And it's quite handy. It may also take a second or two, but um, this is pretty awesome. It simplified the whole process of adding Docker, uh, the Docker keys to the APT and all that stuff. 
All right, so the script is done. And as you can tell, it's telling us that right now we need to use, we need to do additional things to make Docker not available as a uh, privileged user. What this means is that you don't want to use sudo when using Docker. Like right now, if I type sudo ps, which is ps is just the command to list the running containers at the moment. Um, it works fine, but if I do docker ps without sudo, it's going to say permission denied. Obviously, we don't want to have to use sudo and authorize a program to run every time. So uh, all we need to do is add docker to the user group, and you achieve this by running this command, sudo user mod dash lowercase a capital G, then docker and then add this environment variable, which is dollars, dollars, um, yeah, dollar score user. Now, once you run this, you will need to re log back in in order for it to take effect. So, like if we try doing Docker PS, it's going to give us the same error. However, if we exit the SSH session and then go back and log in again. Now we can do Docker PS and it runs without needing to use sudo. Now we have Docker installed. This works perfectly. We can even go on ahead and say Docker run hello dash world. This is usually, you know, the hello world image. And you can tell that Docker is working properly. Now we need an additional utility to use with Docker called Docker compose. Now, I think the latest version of Docker Compose is 2.23, but we don't care about versions for what we're doing. So we can go ahead and install the Docker Compose version that is available in APT. So we can just type Docker dash compose. Oh, sorry. <laughs> so it'll APT install Docker Compose. This is going to install the Docker Compose utility and all of its dependencies, which are quite a lot. But Docker Compose is what's going to make our life easy. Uh, it may take a second, so I'll be right back when it's done installing. All right, so Docker Compose is done installing. So if we type docker dash compose dash v, we should get the version of the Docker Compose that is installed. And we are basically good to go. Um, we have Docker and Docker Compose. So moving forward, almost everything we do is going to be based of, it's, ba it's gonna be based on these two dependencies. Uh, we're gonna first install PyHole so that we can block ads in our local network and then we're gonna move on from there to NextCloud, which I'm really excited for. So stay tuned and God bless.